Welcome to another episode of Make with Mrs. McClure. I'm Mrs. McClure. Um, today I'm going to be showing you guys how to do this African silhouette landscape project. It is a painting and drawing project. I'm going to be doing this project with my second graders, um, but obviously you can really do this project with just about any age and they'd enjoy it and they'd come out pretty cool. So that's what I'm going to show you today. Um, let's get started. Okay, so we're going to start by painting the background, which is the sunset. Um, you can decide if you want your sun setting off to the corner and slowly getting darker as it goes out, or if you would prefer for your picture to have the sun setting in the middle at the bottom along the horizon line. Some students have even preferred to make it look like maybe the sun's either rising or not quite setting yet. So the sun can be in one of the upper corners and the color can get darker as it goes across the paper. There's really a lot of options for where you decide to put your sun. But basically you wanna put your sun at one of the edges as either a quarter circle, if it's in the corner, or a half circle, it's at the bottom or the top. I'm gonna to go ahead and put my sun right in the middle at the bottom and make it a half circle to make it look like a traditional sunset basically. So I have kind of um, a medium to large round brush. Round um, works just fine or the flat brushes are fine. And then I have four colors of temper paint in my paint palette. Yellow in the middle, orange, red, and purple on the side. So I'm just gonna start with yellow. Um, some people like to draw where their sun's gonna go first. But I prefer not to do that because if you do, you might still see the pencil line where you drew it. I think it looks nicer if the colors just slowly change and you can't see the pencil line underneath since temper paint doesn't completely cover pencil. So I'm just going to start with the paint without drawing where my sun goes. And I'm just going to take it and do my half circle. It doesn't have to be perfect. Since we're going to be blending these, you won't see exactly where that line is that you're painting right now. It'll kind of slowly blend into the orange. Now the key here is once you've started painting, you want to go kind of quick because you want your colors to stay wet so that when you add the next color, you can blend them together. So that's what I'm going to do. I've got my yellow on here. If it doesn't seem wet along the edge, which is where you're going to blend your colors, you can always take some more yellow and paint it along there just so it stays nice and wet. Um, so now that this is ready to go, I'm going to start slowly changing the yellow towards orange. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a little bit of orange and not even a whole brush full and I'm gonna mix it with all of the yellows in my paint palette. Now this isn't mixed because there's still yellow there. You wanna make sure to get it all scooped together and as you mix, your paint does spread out so you wanna take your paintbrush and kind of scoop it back to the middle. Mixed up is when there are no more swirls. It's one all over color. So you can see that that yellow got much more orangey but it's not as orange as the orange tempera. So it's kind of between the orange tempera and the yellow, which is what you want. You want it to be a little bit more orange. So I'm just gonna paint one nice thick stripe of this orange. If you're using a smaller paintbrush, you might do like two stripes, um, but about an inch is good. Now, the one step that a lot of people forget, which is what makes this look not like a sunset, is they don't blend between this color and the previous color. Blending means when you take the two colors and you mix them together just where they touch. So we don't want the yellow to become all orange and we don't want the orange to become all yellow. We just want the two to mix together right along that line where they're connected. And so the way you blend is while both colors are still wet, you just take your brush and go back and forth where they connect. And you can see how they kind of mix together. You can see the difference between the side and the side that's not blended. So you just need to go along that edge where your orange and your yellow touch. 
and blend them a little bit. And that's what's gonna really make this look like a sunset. You don't wanna have extra paint on your brush when you do that. You want your brush to be mostly free of paint. There's still a little at the top, but that's okay. And so you just blend those together. Now we're gonna repeat the step again. You take a little more orange, you mix it up with your orangey yellow that you have in the middle of your paint palette. And again, this color should become less yellow and more orange each time. So that looks a little bit more orange, not quite that orange though. I'm just gonna do the same process again. Then I need to blend. Don't forget to blend each time you add a new color. Now I'm gonna do that maybe one more time. And of course, if you feel like it didn't change very much, you can always add a little bit more. Okay, so this looks almost as orange as this. So I'm ready to transition into using just my orange. So I'm gonna take what's left of my orange and scoop it all into there, because this is the color I'm gonna be using now. If um, you ran out of the yellowy orange, that's fine, because now you're ready to use just your regular orange. We're gonna slowly start adding red to it. So you just wanna have some more base in here, basically. We can go ahead and mix it up. It should be about the same color. This is my true orange. So all of these shades are orangey yellow. But now I'm doing a stripe that's basically just that orange. Blend. So if you're doing this in stages, like if you're working on this project in class, like my second graders are, this is a good stopping point. Because next time what you can do is you can start with your regular orange in the middle, paint a little bit more of it right along the edge to get that edge wet again. Since this is a color that came straight out of a bottle, it's not something you're trying to remix. And then start by adding red. So if you need a stopping point, this is a good stopping point. So now we're gonna go ahead and start adding red to our orange the same way we added orange to our yellow. So I'm gonna take a scoop of red and I'm gonna mix it up with all of my orange, so scoop that all back to the middle. And the orange should start looking a little bit more reddish. It shouldn't be this red yet, but it should be more reddish than it was before. If you ever go to paint on your paper and you think it looks exactly the same, just wait, add a little bit more, and then you can do it. But I think that made a good little change. So each time you're adding a new color, you want it to look just a little bit darker, a little bit more to the next color than the last stripe did. You should see a little change with each of your stripes as you paint them on. Blend. And I'm just gonna repeat this same process now with the red and the orange the way I did with the orange and the yellow. So just like with the yellow to orange, in about three or four stripes, your yellow should become pretty much orange. So again, just in about three or four stripes, my orange has become almost completely red. You can see on the paper how it looks almost completely red. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take what's left of my red, add it to what I'm calling my base. That should turn it all pretty much red because now I'm ready to start transitioning from my red to purple. So I'm gonna do one stripe with just that red. And again, if you're working in stages, this is another good stopping point because you're stopping with a color that you can basically get out of a bottle next time. So I could stop here and the next time paint a little bit more red along the edge and then slowly starting adding purple to my red. But I'm just gonna keep going for now. So some kids get 
the yellow, the orange, and the red, and they've ran out of room. If that's the case, that's okay. You don't have to have the purple. The purple just makes it look like a night sky starting to come in. It could just be all the sunset colors minus the purple, and that's okay too. But I do have some space left now that I've done my red, so I'm gonna start adding purple to my uh, base mixture. So purple is a pretty strong color. You don't need as much of it as maybe you did the red or the orange. So just start with a little bit because you can always add more if it doesn't change. It also depends on how much paint you have here as your base. I've got quite a bit because I didn't want to run out as I was filming the video. But if you have less paint here, you might need less of your color to change it. I'm going to need a little bit more. So you can see that that little bit of purple is starting to kind of darken up this red. It's making this red look a little bit closer to a sunset -y purple. So I'm going to go ahead and add it. Blend. Do some more. So you can see with this sunset, I've got almost the corners all filled up. I'm not gonna get a super purpley edge to it because I did use a pretty big brush. So each of my stripes is a little bit bigger. If you want to end up with more of a purple at the top, just use a smaller brush, do skinnier strokes. And so you can see that as you keep on adding the purple to the red, it is getting a more um, violet tone each time. I've just reached the point where I'm almost out of paper, so we won't get quite to that whole deep purple color, which is okay. This still makes a really nice looking sunset for the background for a picture. Um, here's an example of one where I use smaller brush strokes, so the yellow became orange sooner the orange became red sooner and the red had more time to go out to that dark purple. So it just depends. I also started my sun in the middle, which gives it less room to grow than if you start on one side where it has the whole rest of the paper to grow to the other side. So it really depends on the look you're going for, but this will totally work for our sunset. So we just gotta wait for it to dry, then we're gonna do the silhouette. Okay, so now that our sunset background is dry, we are ready to add our silhouettes into our picture. So the reason they're called silhouettes is because the backlighting in our picture, the light that's coming from the background created by the sun is so bright that everything else appears black. Your eyes can't take in both this bright light and the features on these objects that don't create any light. So our eyes read these as appearing to be black. Are they actually black in your life? No, of course not. A giraffe is different shades of tan and brown. A tree is brown and green, but that's the way our eyes perceive these things because of how bright the light is behind them. That's what makes this picture look so cool. So what we need to do is first we need to start with our ground. Um, you don't want your ground to be too high up because that would cover a lot of your beautiful background and that would take a lot of space away. But you also don't want your ground to be too low um, because it makes the picture look weird. Now remember, this is the ground in Africa. Um, so it's not going to be a perfect flat straight line. It's going to be kind of lumpy and bumpy. Some kids even choose to add kind of a grass texture going along the top. But basically you're just gonna draw everything in pencil right now, starting with the ground. Um, you can choose to do just a single animal in the middle. You could do a couple animals. I think I might actually do an animal in a tree just to kind of make the picture more interesting. It really depends on what you want in your picture. So I'm gonna try to kind of sketch out what would look like one of the stereotypical trees that you see in a lot of images of Africa. Okay, so that's a pretty stylized tree. It's not completely realistic. Obviously there would be hundreds more branches, but that's kind of a simplified version. Since it is a silhouette, we want to be able to see the different details. Now I'm going to go ahead and add my animal into this picture. As you sketch, it's very important to keep your pencil lines as light as possible. Because when you are erasing, you're not just erasing on a white piece of paper, but you're erasing from um, on top of that painted background. And so if you push too hard, it's very likely that either your lines won't come off or 
your erase marks um, will also, your erasing will also erase some of the background, which we don't want to happen. So make sure that you're sketching, you're not pushing down real hard with your pencil. Okay, so there is my outline for everything that I want to have in my picture. I've got my tree, my ground, my animal. Oh, and I just forgot a tail. I thought that looked a little weird. Now the only thing I really worried about drawing since this is a silhouette is the outlines. I didn't worry about adding eyes or spots or texture to my animal. There's no need to add any of that because you're not gonna see any of that. This is all gonna be black. This is all gonna be black. So I don't need to add an eye because the eye would be black and the space around it would be black. The only thing I'm really worrying about is my outlines. And I've done some pretty good outlines. I think just by the outlines you can tell what it is. If you can't tell what your picture is of, just by the outlines, you're not going to be able to tell when you color it in. So you need to make sure you can really tell what it is a picture of just by the outlines you've drawn. So if you've got all your outlines done, then you're ready to start doing your black. Now I grabbed a good variety of Sharpies. You could obviously do this all with just a regular Sharpie, but it is nice to have the option of a really fine point Sharpie if you have some skinny areas that you need to do. It doesn't look like I have too many skinny areas unless I wanted to add some more twigs to the branches or some more grass. Um, then you have your regular Sharpie, which is good for your outlining. And I also have one of these king size Sharpies, which I'm going to use to color everything in. So what you're going to do is you're just going to start with your regular Sharpie. And you want to trace every single line you drew as neatly as possible. So you really want to hide all your pencil lines. If you have any pencil lines that show through that you decide you don't need, you can just erase them. Okay, so I have all my outlines traced. You can see some pencil lines that I've actually missed, but these aren't really outlines. I know that these are actually inside of something I'm gonna color black, so I don't really need to trace them. If you do trace all of those, that's not gonna hurt anything. I just know that when I color this part and this part black, that will hide that pencil line. But my goal is to get all my outlines traced, which I've done. Now the next step is you're gonna be coloring these in with black. Um, I find it easiest to use a king size Sharpie to do that. It has nice coverage and it covers a nice large area once. But one of the problems that I have seen, especially when students do this, is that as they're coloring, they're just coloring really fast and they're getting out of that line we drew and that changes your outline and that makes it look less like what you were trying to draw. If you change the outline by getting out of the lines, it can really mess up your picture. In some areas, like in these trees, I can hide that by just extending the outline to cover that. But if I'm tracing, say, the head of my giraffe and I scribble outside of the lines, it's not gonna look like a giraffe anymore. So one thing that I recommend to students is the areas that are already really skinny, just go ahead and color those in with a regular Sharpie. So these areas, we don't need a big Sharpie for, because really a regular Sharpie can fill it in pretty easily. Save the large Sharpie for the bigger areas that you need to color in. Another thing that I sometimes have students do if I'm very worried about them coloring really messy is I even just sometimes have them go back and do a second line on the inside that goes all the way around everything you've traced and that just kind of thickens up all of your edges a little bit more and then once those edges are a little bit thicker it makes it even safer to color everything in with a bigger sharpie because now you have a little bit more of a buffer along those edges to color a little bit faster. It really depends on what age is doing this. I do this project with my second grade students, and so I encourage them to do at least the skinny areas with their regular Sharpie before they go back with their thicker Sharpie. Of course, if you don't have those big Sharpies, you could just do everything with the skinny Sharpie. So 
That's the next step is basically getting everything in your picture all colored in. The other thing that I teach my students as they're coloring it is to not just scribble in the middle, but instead pick an edge to follow and then continue to follow that edge back and forth because this actually helps you fill stuff in a lot quicker because then you don't have little holes and gaps that you have to go back and fill in. So that's one way I encourage my students to color theirs. All right, so that's pretty much it. Now remember, you can really use these painting and drawing skills and techniques to create lots of different works of art. Obviously, you can create a variety of these landscape pictures. Um, you can change the picture depending on where you put your sun in the image. That affects the outcome of the picture quite a bit. You know, um, you can show creativity and make your image look different depending on what kind of animal you put in your picture and what other details you decide to include in your picture. So just because it's a silhouette doesn't mean that you can't have lots of different details in your picture to kind of tell a story. You can even take this painting technique and change the colors so that instead of being a warm sunset, for example, it could maybe be a rising fall moon with blues and purples and reds in the sky. Um, you could have spooky trees and owls and houses as the silhouette and create a totally different feeling picture using the exact same process um, and skills that we learned today. So I hope that that helped you. I hope you enjoyed learning about this project and I hope you create some awesome ones. Thanks for watching.